This video is going to review the treatment of a sucking chest wound pre-hospital for the civilian practitioner. So the recommendations for this have changed over time, but let's go over what's happening here. So when someone's breathing, you're bringing air in through your nose and mouth into your chest. That's using negative pressure. Your diaphragm's pulling down and it's sucking air in. Now the problem is once you have a hole in your chest that's open, this creates a pocket where air will now enter this hole because of that negative pressure where the diaphragm's pulling down as you breathe in. But this hole is going into the chest wall, which is the space in between the actual lung and the chest wall. And the problem is if we bring more and more air in through this hole, that there's gonna be air in the space between the chest wall and the lung, and that's gonna compress the lung and not allow it to fully expand, therefore limiting oxygenation. So that's our issue with the sucking chest wound. Now our old school management was to use an occlusive dressing like a plastic bag placed over this and taped down on three sides. Now the challenge was this is very difficult to do on a sweaty patient with lots of blood and it was really difficult to get this done right and usually what happened with all the sweat is this would just completely stick down. Now the problem with completely covering this and not allowing air to exit that hole is you can build up pressure in the chest called it tension pneumothorax and this can put pressure on the heart and cause it to be difficult for the heart to actually circulate blood to the body. So the newest recommendation, if you do not have a vented chest seal, is to just cover it with a gloved hand to start, and then just use gauze to create a regular dressing. Now, you can also leave this just open to air, but they're saying put some gauze on. If it does get saturated with blood and the patient is doing worse, then take it off and replace it with some new gauze. So this is a big change in management, and this is according to uh, Canadian Red Cross uh, new policies based on the uh, 2020 guidelines. So that's our management of a sucking chest wheel with nothing. Gloved hand to cover it. You could put some gauze on it. Hold that on there to control some of the bleeding. You're not going to have deadly bleeding from this hole. Again, more this is an air issue. If this is getting saturated with blood and causing the patient to have more breathing difficulty, take it off and change it out with some fresh gauze. This is a stopgap. This is not definitive care. This patient needs to go to a hospital urgently and get more definitive, aggressive management strategies done. Now, something that you can purchase to add to a kit uh, to deal with a sucking chest wound is a chest seal. So this is our recon medical chest seal that's vented. So the difference between this and a plastic bag is that this actually has almost like a gel-like adherence on it, and it has venting pathways. So you're actually going to put the hole right over where the sucking chest wound is. You're going to take off the, the peeled the adhesive cover and seal this down. And now what will happen is as the patient breathes in, this will cover the hole to reduce air from going into the chest. But as they breathe out, air that's trapped in that space between the lung and the chest wall can actually exit through these vented channels. So you have three vented channels. And the reason for multiple vented channels is in case these get clogged up with blood. So you can place this over a patient. Now they may have an exit wound as well, so you may need to roll the patient, check on the back, and if they have an exit, then you're gonna put another chest seal on that as well. But that's the whole idea with the chest seal. It's a really sticky gel pad. It's gonna adhere much better. Now these pads do also come with some gauze. So when you first expose the wound and find it, you're probably gonna find lots of blood and sweat. You're gonna take that gauze and clean off the area as best you can to improve the adhesion of the chest seal. Take off the backing to expose that gel and then stick the chest seal on the patient. Now, if the patient is getting worse and these are getting clogged, you can actually use your finger just to clear these channels to make sure that they're venting properly. So that's the management of a sucking chest wound in a patient pre-hospital. Again, this would be a 911 emergency. So all these devices or treatments are just trying to reduce the air entering through the sucking chest wound to reduce how much pressure is being put on that lung. And we just want to be cautious when we're doing this to not completely occlude this and build up pressure in the chest that's going to cause difficulty for the heart pumping.